Hey everybody, James Shepard here with another edition of the Merchant Sales Insight. Today we're talking about competing with Payfax onboarding. Now it is no secret that Payfax like Toast, Square and others have really been gaining a lot of ground. And one of the key advantages that they have that is a disadvantage for the ISO and acquirer community is this instant onboarding process that they have. And so I want to take a little time today to talk about this friction that exists in the, you know, onboarding process for merchants and how we can reduce and hopefully eventually we can eliminate this friction because it's such a huge issue. Um, one of the other interesting things about this particular issue, it's one of those ones where I feel like I'm in a unique position to give some insight about this because I spend a lot of my time talking to individual agents in the industry uh, for free. And then I spend a lot of my time talking to consulting clients that are executives at payment processing companies. And often I see certain issues where there is like a complete disconnect. I'll give you a really good example of that. Um, two years ago, every single agent I talked to told me that they didn't care about anything other than cash discounting and the idea of passing the cost of processing on to the consumer and they were going to make a fortune and that's all they cared about. And like, that was it, right? Every executive I talked to from payment, not everyone, almost all the payment processing executives I talked to said, it's a fad. It's not really that big of a deal yet. I think it's going to fizzle out. And I was like, no, it's not. You know, like, I, I, like, no, I just talked to everybody. So this is one of those things. You know, this idea of the onboarding process, the underwriting process, the deployment, all of this, getting a merchant set up, you know, when I talk to payments executives, they're like, yeah, that's kind of a necessary evil. It's a little bit annoying. We're working on it. When I talk to agents, they're like, yeah, I don't sell for that processor anymore because they have a really bad onboarding and they move to somebody else. You know, like it's a huge deal to them and it's a huge deal to the merchant. But for some reason, a lot of the ISOs and acquirers don't seem to to grasp the fact that it's really, really a problem. So let's break it down. I want to talk about three friction points and how we can, you know, reduce or potentially eliminate that. Before I do that, let me just say this edition is sponsored by, of course, NMI and Iris CRM. So if you don't know, NMI acquired Iris CRM. So they joined forces, two processor agnostic companies. And one of the main reasons that they joined together, I talked to VJ about this on a recent podcast episode, was that they wanted to fix this problem. They wanted to reduce this friction. Well, you've got Iris CRM that has the direct connections uh, through the API and everything. They have direct connections to the underwriting uh, departments at all the big processing companies and acquirers. Then you have NMI, which is the gateway that can kind of, you know, uh, work with all the different technology solutions, right? So they joined forces and that's one of the reasons they did that. So I, I'll talk about them a little bit as I go through here, but um, I asked them to sponsor this edition for obvious reasons because they just came out with their instant onboarding thing. So, um, okay. So where is this friction coming from? Number one, the dreaded merchant app, okay? Um, when I got into the payments industry 13 years ago, I was told man, you're going to do so well. The only thing you have to know how to do is read payment processing statements and fill out a merchant app. Well, are you kidding me? Those are the two like most complicated things ever. You have a 17 page, you know, at that time paper application. And it's like, because these acquirers and ISOs, you know, because you offer these solutions to everybody for everything, these things are incredibly difficult to fill out because they have to like you know, that has to be like, oh, this is the merchant app that you fill out if you're selling Interchange Plus or tiered or flat rate or dual pricing or cash discounting or compliance surcharging. And it's the same app that you fill out if you're doing a point of sale system, a standalone terminal, a tablet, a gateway, an e-commerce merchant, a shopping cart integration. You know, it's like, oh my goodness, why are we putting all of this in a one document, right? Um, and it's just ridiculous. So there's so much we can do here, but the, the theme you're going to hear throughout is this idea of verticalization and standardization. The issue here is variation, right? And so if we made a merchant app and said, here is our, you know, restaurant merchant app, right? If you want to sell a restaurant on this solution, here it is. And I'm not just talking about making some slight adjustments. I'm talking about significant overhaul, right? Making these things very simple. We've, we've moved to the online digital app, which is great, except that frankly, a lot of the ones that I've dealt with that I've seen through consulting and, and even I've you know, been putting deals through recently, it's kind of like, well, it's digital, but I mean, that's helpful, but it's kind of like they digitize the old, you know, app. I mean, like, let's just see the fields that we need to see. Let's fill them out and let's be done with it, right? So um, fortunately, again, I, I'm going to mention them a few times here, but our sponsor, Iris CRM, they have this online application where they can really kind of customize it for your needs. And so I would definitely talk to them about this, get a demo, and they're making a lot of progress, um, really trying to move the ball down the field in this uh, direction. So number one, the dreaded merchant app, we got to make that thing simpler. I talk a lot more about it in the actual, um, you know, PDF version. So go to ccsalespro.com slash insights and check that out. 
So, the dreaded merchant app. Number two, the underwriting delay. The underwriting delay. I recently did a 4000 a month volume, low-risk merchant account, okay? It took eight days to get this account approved. Eight days. And when it was finally approved, it was a deal where I needed a, a gateway account, an API to integrate with software, and they sent the, I didn't even know it was done. It ended up all the uh, information for the gateway got sent to the merchant instead of to our team. And we're the ones doing the integration. Anyway, you know, ISOs and agents are just not going to tolerate that very much longer. I mean, many of them are already saying enough is enough. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're already saying, no, we're done with that, right? So that's a huge issue. And again, why is there this underwriting delay? Well, let's, let's compare, you know, Toast to... Uh, you know, uh, to a regular big, you know, acquiring bank, right? Well, when the underwriting team at Toast, well, it's not even, you know, they, I'm sure they have an underwriting team, but really it's the software. But when they get an application, guess what? They know it's supposed to be a restaurant. They know it's supposed to be, you know, they know what the average ticket's going to be. It's a restaurant. They know kind of in general what the volume's going to be, right? They know it's not going to be two f- to $4 million a month in volume. That would be like, okay, wait a second. We need to take a look at that, right? So, you know, they know they know what hardware is going to go out. Like they know the merchant's not going to be able to process payments until they get their Toast device. They set it up in their restaurant and then they start processing. So where's the risk, right? There's no uncertainty. There's no variation. So when they get an account, as long as they, you know, send out and check a data API and they're like, oh, yep, that's a legitimate restaurant. Oh, yep, that's the right average ticket. That's in the, the volume range. They want a Toast system. That's what we sell. Great, we're good to go. Instant approval because the risk is not there because the variation isn't there. In our industry, you send the same merchant through. Well, they have no idea, right? Like, well, goodness, you know, what kind of business are they going to get today? Well, they're probably going to get a hundred different kinds of businesses today, right? They're going to get different systems. They're going to have all this variation, right? It could be a $2 million a month merchant. It could be a $2,000 a month merchant. And so as a result of all this variation, there's all this extra work that has to be done to like validate things, right? So again, what can we do? We can streamline that. We can say, wait a second, let's create at least, you know, in my opinion, every single underwriting department, every single one, you should have at least some kind of criteria for instant approval, right? Maybe you only instantly approve like 10% of the deals. That's fine. Start there, then make it a goal to get from 10% to 20% and then 20 to 30, 30 to 40. But you should have some kind of criteria where you're like, this is definitely a low risk merchant. We found the data. They've been in business for 10 plus years. This is not a high risk profile account. The volume is low. The average ticket is reasonable. Like, you know what I mean? It should be like, this is instantly approved. And then let's see if we can expand that over time. And so we need to be, as, a, as an industry, pushing these organizations we work with to do these things. It's so important to, to our future, right? So, uh, all right. So we have the dreaded merchant app, we have the underwriting delay, then we have the disjointed deployment. The disjointed deployment. Um, I have a great example that I don't have time to give here about my first, uh, the time that I sold a point of sale, uh, you know, a deal where I had to integrate with a point of sale company. Long story short, it was an absolute nightmare. And this is what's happening, you know, in our industry. There's a lot of finger pointing and, well, you know, the processor told me I got the right VAR sheet and the point of sale company said I didn't and they don't want to integrate. And it's like, just such a mess. Even when we're deploying equipment that's like our own equipment that we're sending out, you know, that's like, you know, we are deploying the equipment as the ISO. It still is a mess a lot of times. What we need to do again is reduce variation, streamline these processes, really look at this and say, okay, let's go through verticals or let's go through certain scenarios because most agents really only sell like two or three different kind of things as a general rule. You know, they sell dual pricing with the this smart terminal or they sell interchange plus with the gateway or, you know, they only have a few things they do. So make a library of templates that's like, hey, this is pre-filled, this is ready to go and or work with Iris CRM to settle this up the right way. And by the way, now with NMI, NMI will instantly create the gateway accounts, okay, when you send the app through Iris CRM. So what does that mean? Well, that means now when you have, okay, here's the terminal that we're using. When the app is completed, it will instantly create the right NMI account with the right settings so that you can complete the integration. Okay, so if you want to learn more about our sponsors, go to NMI, that's Nancy Mary Indigo, NMI.com. If you want to learn more about Iris CRM, go to Iris, I-R-I-S, C-R-M.com. My name is James Shepard. I hope you've enjoyed this edition, and I hope it will spur you on to put a little pressure on these big companies to get rid of this friction with the onboarding process so we can really compete with the Payfax. Mm-hmm.